at one point I, I baked pastries in my oven <laughs> in my summer. <laughs> now you you mentioned making the pastries. That wasn't your body hair in that one, was it? No. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, it's your boy, the Lo-Fi Horror Guy. Welcome to another episode of the Lo-Fi Horror Guys growing on you live. Uh, very, very excited. We're going to have a special AM episode today. Uh, I'm going to be having my man, Nile Svensson, all the way from Sweden. He's going to be uh, joining us today. Super, super excited. I cannot wait. Uh, Nile was the art director for Midsommar uh, most recently. But he has had all sorts of different endeavors, all sorts of uh, uh, different uh, jobs and titles in the art community. Uh, some being film, some being designer, uh, just all, all sorts of things. So once we get my man on, here you are. We'll get you joined on LinkedIn. Hey. Mille, hey, how's it going, man? Yeah, hey, uh, it's okay. Thank you. How are you? Very, very good. Thank you very much for being on. I so appreciate it, man. No worries. Uh, awesome. Where, where in the world are you right now? I, I'm Ge in Michigan. Geographically. I'm in Michigan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so, so on, on the west side there, you know, a little bit closer to the lake, a little bit closer yeah, to the water. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, where and whereabouts are you? Are you currently? I'm just outside of Stockholm. In Stockholm. Sweden. Okay. Okay. So I, awesome. I mean, I'm in my house. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Me, 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 me. What What are some of your 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 origins into how you got into art? Uh, I I studied graphic design at mm -hmm. one of the universities in here in Stockholm. Okay. And uh, I don't know. It it's I don't remember what I sort of expected the. The work or like the career would be like, but uh, looking back at it, I've done a, a lot of different things. So I, I think, uh, in ways, you know, entering an art school and and uh, sort of being accepted into an art school is more like you, you you train yourself to have a kind of mindset, I guess. Uh, okay. So. I mean, I've I've worked more like a commercial. Nowadays, I call myself a commercial artist. Okay. Which means that I can I can do pretty much anything that that has some kind of creativity uh, involved in it. And uh, but I'm I don't consider myself to be like my my friends who are you know fine artists. They are mm. are more sort of self propelled. They have some kind yeah, of okay. artistic agenda that sort of drives them uh, whether anyone is interested or not, <laughs> which, <laughs> right. which I think is, is maybe the a kind of divider there. Um, okay. I, I like it when people come to me and sort of ask me for stuff. That's okay. Sort of gets, that, that sort of gets my creative juices flowing in a way. Okay. Uh, and, I, and I also like, uh, I think, when I create something, I like to have this kind of purpose, this sort of layer or idea that, that things are going to be used. It has a kind of purpose, something to sort of, you can always lean your work against, you know, is, is this appropriate or not? Will this work or not? Is this sort of helping whatever is, uh, you know, supposed to be achieved uh, sure. by adding my work to it? So commercial artists, that's sort of maybe the best title I can come up with right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, and I mean, you know, over the years you've had lots of different titles and lots of different roles, but overall just being involved and being a contributor uh, to, to the art yeah. community, very much so. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. I mean, for for for, I'm also very interested in in uh, structures and and sort of power structures and and how uh, technical structures and power structures and cultural structures are sort of intertwined. So for for a lot of years, I worked with a, a startup project in publishing, where oh, okay. I, we made it possible for people to publish books without having mm. to sort of make a lot of investment, down investment. In, uh, so we made like a, a distribution and production chain uh, that made oh, it possible wow. to, for, for books to be printed digitally uh, every time somebody bought them in, in a, online or in a shop. Oh, uh, wow. So it's a, like a real on demand printing. Uh, and that's something that sort of was grow, grew out of an idea that I, I think that, that sort of money or, or economical sort of reasons a lot of the time dictates what is being produced right, or not. Right, uh, right. And, and, and so, I mean, that, that's something that instru- interests me a lot of how who decides or what forces decides what is being made or not, you know. And, okay. Uh, of, of course, in film, that's a huge, I mean, you, you really have to have a, a stack of money. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I, not, not always, but it's, it's, it's a sort of a deciding factor that's always present. And, and even right. though you get your project rolling, uh, the final result is it's, uh, very much sort of a reflects or dependent upon uh, uh, funding, of course. Uh, right. But I mean, there's always ways to to. I mean, creativity in a way, I think is is. I mean, one of the ways to measure it is is, I guess, is uh, doing something with the means you have at your disposal. I guess that's right. sort of to 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 sort of get it done uh, right right okay, okay. <laughs> whatever is working against you i guess it's part of, of creating something yeah of sure course. sure okay you know and i mean touching on that too as far as you know horror primarily my show is a horror show and yeah and yeah. uh you know mm. uh, it's been mentioned kind of lately with everything you know being in quarantine and kind of locked down you know horror has always been a genre where you know they've kind of adapted and overcome and tried to do you know whatever you can within the means uh, mm. You know, however, but Midsummer was completely on the opposite spectrum of that with very many contributors and different visual sites on. So it was, uh, you know, definitely interesting uh, to look into your research and your, your work within the movie. And we're going to dig into that as well. So yeah, yeah. that's, that's sure. awesome. Sure. So if I came over and I, I was traveling, you know, after all this lifted, I, I come over to Stockholm and I asked you as far as like a local eatery or a local you know, food staple. Where, where, what, what direction are you pointing me in? Where are we going to go? Uh, to get something that is local. Uh, shit, that's a, that's a hard <laughs> question. <laughs> uh, I would, I would probably take you to a restaurant that people that I know started and, and are are uh, okay. working on, uh, just because. You know, I know them, so I want to support them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, but, sure. but as and it's called Black. It's very beautifully situated. Uh, but I mean, Swedish cuisine is is pretty much you know uh, international cuisine these days. Uh, so if if you wanted to 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 have a taste of something that's typically Swedish, I I, I think I had to look it up. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so, so much, so much for ice breaking on that one. <laughs> but well, it's I, like when I mean, when people people ask you, you know, what what hotel should I stay at when in Stockholm? It's like I'm clueless. I have a house. So yeah. this is be, be pretty much, And I'm not a, I'm not that much of a. I'm a bit restless. So restaurants. Okay. I don't, I mean, I, I, I like to, you know, have a beer and, and have like a social situation, but, but restaurants isn't really my thing to sit down and have a long meal. Okay. I like to, I like to grab something and get on with keep, whatever keep I'm moving. doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've, okay. I've, it's not my, uh, but if, if you, you, 
find yourself here. I'll, I'll, I'll sort you out. I promise. <laughs> Okay. No, no worries. What what about some pubs? Let let's talk that. I'm I'm all about that. You got like any any smaller breweries that are that are around you there? Yeah, there's. I mean, there's. Uh, a, a, I mean, there's a lot of beer stuff going on. I mean, one of the more interesting, I think, is Omnipoyo, which is also people okay. I know that are making. I mean, both the beer and the the interior design. They have their own places. Oh, wow. There is one opening up in Tokyo now. Wow. Uh, so, but I mean, it's it's like Stockholm is like any city nowadays. I guess it, right. it has its it's like uh, there is different parts, and some parts are more sort of artisan and and hipster uh, <laughs> culture sort of centers. Uh, and but now with the corona and everything, I mean, the, 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 there's not a, a lot of new things uh, yeah. happening. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Uh, right. Things are doing. But some, yeah, but you could you could check out that uh, for 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 beer, of course. Uh, okay. All right. If you're and, into and, that, yeah. And you know, and I, and I ask that more out of you know not necessarily just a, a, a for sure place or anything, but it's just you know I've gotten you know some some guests obviously like yourself out of country, out of state, you know, and yeah, my, yeah, wife, yeah. my wife and I do a little traveling, and I just like to hear local places to people that actually live around there, as opposed to pulling up something online and they pull up some BS place that already gets way too much money day to day, you know. So here, yeah. just you know, smaller local places or something that. It's a favorite of, uh, you know, the guests on the show. I love hearing that stuff. So that's more than more than perfect answer. <laughs> so let me ask you as far as, you know, if, if you and I were making a horror movie and I asked you to come up with the monster or the villain or, you know, just whatever it might be, maybe a vampire or a werewolf or some sort of giant insect, what, what villain for a horror movie would you come up with? Whew. Uh, I, s something I think is something that you don't, uh, would expect to be a monster. I, okay. I, I think I like the idea that, that movies like, uh, uh, where, where people are sort of mimicking, like there's like this body double, uh, idea. Okay. Uh, because it, it, the scary thing with that is that it actually sort of challenges the whole idea of trust, uh, oh, which I think is yeah. maybe the most scariest situation right. uh, uh, that you could, you know, it's a bit like, like people don't keep their promises or being unfaithful. You have this kind of the whole, your whole idea of reality kind of <laughs> she, she, shifts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, a lot, of, a, a lot of, I, I tried to explain for my kids the other day because they were scared of some monster <laughs> that, you know, and I, I told them, you know, there are no monsters and, you know, this is, you don't have to be afraid. And they said, you know, like, yeah, but we saw this movie. I mean, the movies, they exist, you know. And I tried to tell them, you know, what, what, who should be more scared in, in, in this movie situation? There's always like a lonely monster, you know, <laughs> going about doing its thing. And then the movie starts and, and for some reason it gets sort of has this uh, uh, confrontation with a group of people, often young people in the horror movies. Right. And they are sort of many, and it always ends up with the monster being slaughtered. <laughs> so <laughs> if if you I mean, if you look at it in that perspective, the first thing that should I mean in that first sort of encounter with the monster, uh -huh. the thing that should be going through the monster's head is like shit. Now we're I'm fucked. You know, it's, it's like <laughs> now it, it's like uh, indigenous people on an island seeing white people arrive. I mean, that's uh, it's a uh, right. Death right. sentence. Yeah. Okay. E even okay. even though you're in your territory, yeah. it won't end well for you. Not even Alien, like the, the <laughs> sci-fi horror movie. I mean, that's sort of your your so 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 in that way. I I I mean the, the, those horror movies. They they also I mean the people who are fighting the monsters they have this kind of uh, 
uh, mission and they have this kind of, they are codependent and everything. There's a lot of sort of beautiful sort of kind of human strength displayed. Sure. But but if you have a monster that's that could sort of mimic, I mean, I mean, you think the the shape shifting robot, I think Terminator is, is one of those. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Or the, in the like the last season of of uh, Twin Peaks, when there's uh, I don't remember the okay. the uh, there's like a evil kind of double. Okay. Of every every character in the and 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 in different situations in in the season people don't know if they're dealing with the real or the like the evil sort of uh, mirrored Mir- okay uh, okay yeah so i mean uh, oh that, that's the best answer answer i can I love it. I love it. That is, that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. that, that's awesome. I Not much been... of a monster, though, but yeah. Well, you know, and, and, and that's why I mentioned, like, you know, the whole villain aspect, because not, you know, all the time, it doesn't necessarily have to be some giant Godzilla looking thing. Uh, you know, even recently, once again, bringing up Midsummer, mm. if you, you look at that, you know, the, so to speak, villain in it, you know, that could be many different things. It's not necessarily, yeah. you know, mm. something materialized uh, or yeah. a, or a giant you know insects so uh, yeah i i love that with uh with with some of some of your works you know as far as things that you know have just grown to start as an idea and then materialized into something right in front of you what are some of your crafts that you've been most uh you know you've been most impressed uh you know most happy with uh i mean i i Talking about the the movie, I think the the, the greatest feeling with working with films is that you can sort of you contribute some. Everybody is sort of contributing from from their own sort of knowledge and and sort of special uh, areas of, of expertise or interest or whatever. And looking at it, when you sort of ship stuff or you sort of you know you 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 send in your sort of contributions to the production mm-hmm. you you feel sort of rushed and and you know you you always you make like 10 percent of what you originally sort of intended to <laughs> achieve uh, but then everybody is doing that and and together all our little sort of 10 20 percent sort of halfway sort of finished stuff it actually comes together and, and everything is sort of supporting each other, and, uh, uh, which I think is the, that's the coolest thing with working with film, that everything, because you're always, it doesn't matter how much t- money uh, you have, you're always sort of pressed for something. Uh, right. You don't, you're, you're not able to make as many takes as you have. You, you can't build the sets that you want to. You can't use all the sort of special effects that you intended to uh, Whatever the, the the actors don't have, you know, as much time to prepare as they would, you know, ideally, etc. Et right. So everything is sort of a bit half-assed. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 then when it comes together, everything is sort of the shabby acting. You know, if there is that present, is helped with the, by the music, and the, when the music isn't very good, the, the set design might sort of. So I mean, the the end goal is is actually. It's not even about making people think it's real because everybody knows it's fake. But but uh, it's about immersion. You know, it's not okay. not making it real, but making it relevant. Making it sort of why would I sort of spend my time looking at this? And and right. together we can sort of make that happen. Uh, but when you look at your sort of contribution you you think that oh nobody's going to survive this <laughs> but when <laughs> it comes together you have you have a great director great photography you know it it sort of it becomes something that the audience gets sort of sucked into sure. uh, and that's a very nice experience i think yeah, other times okay. you can sort of contribute with stuff and then you feel that wow this didn't it didn't work in the right context or, or, you know, other people might not have sort of uh, contributed in the same direction with the same ambition or whatever. So, um, okay. Uh, okay. I, I, I'd say, I mean, 
it's I think it's you know for me now right now it's delightful to to say that some of the I mean the the one of the best stuff or most uh, you know pleasurable work I've done is something quite recent. <laughs> so yeah. It's, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that that's uh, and also I mean if you work commercially then then the whole idea of wh whatever you're working on uh as I said it has a kind of purpose and I think you know we're working with film uh one nice thing is that you're actually putting your little sort of commercial or or uh craft art into something that that's in the end the end product is also a piece of art or art um, media sure. uh, product uh, whereas other times you, the, the 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 creative process and the design can be really fun and sort of uh, gratifying but then in the end it's about selling more cars or making somebody <laughs> buy shampoo and right. I, mean, I i i love doing packaging i mean i i love designing so it's it's not a sure. problem but it, i mean in the end you know if you can sort of add extra points to assignments yeah doing yeah. something that that ends up being something that is sort of beautiful in its own right and something that's sort of close to what i like to to you know partake in that's yeah okay an added added bonus sure um you know and, and i had read too you know just in some of my research as far as some of your stuff that you kind of prefer uh working solitary as far as you know your artistic endeavors and certain things mm. uh you know what were what were some of the challenges as far as you know working on the set of midsummer and how many people were on there you know contributing to that what were you know what were some of the challenges with that as far as uh, you know, just just a, a adapting and having such a big team. Mm. I, I think for me, uh, just to to sort of let go of the idea that that I was in charge of the end result. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, for sure. Like, you, like if I if I contributed or had ideas about stuff and everybody was, you know, nobody was interested. Uh, I think I had to quite quickly uh, either, you know, uh, think about it again and, and try to realize why this idea wasn't sort of uh, well achieved yeah, okay. or, or just, uh, uh, I mean, it would just let it go and let my ego kind of, uh, uh, because, because a lot of the times I have, I like to be in control. Uh, but I also found that, that, you know, doing this for a while, it was very liberating because it also, in a way, it sort of takes the responsibility away from yourself. You know, you sure. are in, 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 an, in a process that's sort of bigger than, than me. It's not sort of my... Uh, it, it's, it's something that, that, that I can sort of oversee. Nobody has total control making. That's also something that's very fascinating. I mean, of course, the director's vision is like where everybody tries to go. Right. But even, even the best director cannot sort of oversee everything that's going on. I mean, the, what you can do is you can gather people that you have a feeling that they will understand and they have some kind of... Uh, uh, qualities or, or professional skills that would actually sort of steer the project <laughs> towards right. the vision. But I mean, it, it's only, I think, in the cutting room, if, if even there, that you actually sort of, oh, shit, let's sort of yeah. puzzle this together. And, and, uh, so, and, and that also was a very learning experience. And, and I had to sort of rethink things and also, uh, when we had discussions where I sort of had more sort of clear or stronger opinions about things, I also had to to uh, think about you know how, how this is a it's an international because the material in the film is very much it, it's a lot of folklore Swedish right. folklore right right. Uh, and there you can be, you can sort of be precise or you can go with something that's more like a, 
uh, archetypical or, or you know, uh, whatever. And I, 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 in the beginning, I think I, I wanted to to create something new. I, I felt it was kind of a, it was I, I had some kind of creative prestige against oh. uh, just sort of borrowing. <laughs> I wanted <laughs> to make it sort of smarter in a way. Yeah. But okay. th then when we discussed it, I, I, I realized that people are going to watch this in the Philippines and, you know, in Tokyo and uh, in South America, whatever. And sure. they, will, they would never, ever uh, understand the sort of subtleties in my sort of treatment of this <laughs> Swedish material. Right. And, and it might even be better to go with something that, that is sort of more archetypical or, or sort of cliche, cliche. Uh, yeah. okay. Nordic or whatever. And, and uh, so that was something that I had to come to. And I, I landed in that. And I also, when thinking about it myself, I, I also realized that the, the horror community or a sort of horror aficionados, it's a kind of genre where you where you always you are always sort of playing with the history of horror up till now you know you, mm -hmm. there is a, a, and seeing the movie in theaters i realized that people are sort of pending between laughing at things <laughs> that are sort of sort of too obvious in a way sure and and also sort of wooing when there are turns in the movie that's actually something that's very novel you know, like right. like people people who are watching a skateboarder doing famous tricks very well, and yeah. everybody's like, "Wow!" And then suddenly he or she does something new, yeah. and it's also sort of putting the art form forward. And I, yeah. I, I realize that horror is you can never be too sort of cliche. <laughs> <laughs> right. The horror community will always <laughs> like that you are sort of re working the, right, the culture right. uh, utilizing so, the tools at hand yeah and, and you you can it's it's no worries you don't have to be to, to don't don't sort of destroy yourself trying mm -hmm. to be original you know you can always right. sort of you are playing with with the the cultural history of horror and and uh but and i remember one example that made me realize that is that when i read the script uh uh, one thing I was thinking about is like, oh, uh, this is pretty much like uh, the Wicker Man, the British uh, horror movie. Yeah. Probably, probably, yeah. And for me, uh, I think, oh, is that a problem? Or I was thinking, uh, how will this be received? Uh, not the problem, like it was a huge problem, but I, I saw the similarities and I wondered a bit how how the audience would sort of react to to that or pick pick up on it. Uh, and then when the, the first uh, kind of when A24 started to sort of talking about the film and presenting the film, I, I read something online where people were sort of discussing, oh, this is, you know, people had seen Hereditary and were sort of, sort of waiting for the next Ari Aster. Yeah. Uh, and then the sort of this, the plot was, was presented by A24 and there was some, someone was writing about it. It sounds a bit like the Wikiman for our age or our time or something like that. And then the responses to, to that was like, yeah, I can't wait to see it. You know? <laughs> and then I realized that, that this is not a problem. You know, that people are sort of just wanting horror culture to, to prevail and, and right, <laughs> be sort right. of invented and reinvented at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so, so then I sort of, I calmed down a bit, you know, uh, realizing that uh, okay and I mean I horror know, too yeah. you know there's there's so many movies that could be the same monster over and over but you know there's different angles that you go as far yeah. as you know like how yeah. somebody filmed something how a kill happened the effect of how the kill happened yeah. you know there's so many kind of sub genres into what goes into a horror movie to where mm. you know like you say yeah. you know the same zombie movie has been done over and over but there's mm. little things that are differences in it to where you know people draw and they absolutely still love it so yeah, yeah. yeah. but and, you can and, certainly you can yeah. certainly see you know uh, earlier in when there were you know different people i saw on on forums and things talking about you know like a similarity between the wicker man but uh you know I, it's by no means you know the same thing it's just kind of i think what the 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 visual was was being out 
in the middle of country and having, you know, mm. like a, a simple, you know, way of life and kind of, you know, there being a horror in, uh, uh, tied into it, you know, was kind of mm. the, the draw and the visual behind that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I mean, it, it, yeah, but, it, but that sort of made me realize that, that almost all horror movies are kind of self-aware in a way. Yeah, you know, yeah. They are sort of, a lot of horror movies are sort of commenting on themselves and horror history as they go along. And I mean, maybe all movies have that sort of aspect. Film in general. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but in horror movies, I think, I mean, and also after the, like the Scream movies and the, like the, they are almost ironic. In the, <laughs> I mean, they're very sort of self-reflecting in that way. And I think I Midsommar mean, has moments where it's very sort of, you know, it's a horror movie, you know, and, and then it sort of deals with, with much deeper stuff on yeah. other layers. And it's, it's very, uh, I mean, I don't know if postmodern is it's such an empty word nowadays, but it's very okay. sort of layered, uh, I think. Uh, it does a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, it delivers I mean... a lot of things on, on different levels, of course. Right. And Ari's work, I mean, with both of his movies, along with his shorts as well, there's so many yeah. layers to all of his stuff, mm. you know, and uh, on top of, you know, watching Hereditary and, and loving that when you got Midsummer, the amounts of layers uh, visually, you know, just as far as everything that was going on, it was a very, you know, kind of visceral, mm. emotional yeah. attack in a sense, mm. <laughs> but so much. And I think, um, I think also that he, I mean, talking about this sort of self-awareness or self-reflecting kind of storytelling, I think it also one effect that, that he very successfully creates is that you have to be on, on, on your toes because you're not really knowing where is this going, you know, mm -hmm. and what type of movie is it? <laughs> Are right. we going to see people cut open or is it like a very psychological dense drama? Well, where where are we seeing it? The film starts in one direction and sort of seems to be moving in one direction. And, and I, 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 you have to be sort of literally sitting on the end of your seat while yeah. you're watching it. That, I mean, and that is very successful. And the end is also the sound. I mean, the music track and the the it's visuals. Gorgeous. Are, it's sort of like hearing two different town sounds in your ear. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, it's very, and in that way, it's, it's a very sort of advanced, uh, it sort of advances the position of what horror can be, of course, but, but it's right. also something that horror films are very good at, you know, uh, uh, sort of inventing both, you know, in sound and visuals about what is scary. You know, what, right. what is it? Is it a picture? Is it the feeling you have thinking about the film, you know, two years <laughs> later? Is it not being able to take a swim, you know, right. for the rest of your life? So it's like, how do you sort of create that uh, moment that sort of stays with you? And, uh, and, and I think Midsommar right, is so... it's, it's sort of adding to that uh, legacy. Yeah, for absolutely. Sure, for sure. Yeah. So with with Midsummer, uh, you know, staying on topic, uh, for those mm. who who may not know the importance of of an art director, uh, you know, kind of just give us what exactly your 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 process was and explain, uh, you know, the important role behind what you had in Midsummer. Yeah, uh, I mean, an art director tries to. I mean, in, even if you make a magazine or a, you know. It, it's you, you try to keep some kind of creative control over mm -hmm. the the visual impact mm -hmm. uh, of whatever you're doing, and uh, in a film, it it has to you, you work for. I mean, I work under the set design. The set designer is sort of responsible for that when production starts. All the the scenes that are sort of mentioned in the script. Mm -hmm will be you will be able to film them you know there will be something in the background <laughs> right. behind the, the actors uh it, it sounds sort of but 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 that's sort of and and then the the set designer can assign the art department to make whatever has to be done in order to make that happen i mean it, sometimes you you film in front of a green screen or blue screen and everything is is sort of the art department is 
you know, digital artists. Uh, mm -hmm. And and uh, other times, uh, you you make build sets. You know, like like Midsummer is is a, it's not a lot of special effects in in that aspect. Right. Uh, so, but but again, I mean, the the director is sort of in charge uh, creatively and uh, then from film to film or or you know from instance to instance uh, the 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 anyone can sort of delegate uh, to, to just solve the problem i mean it's in some films uh, the director might have a very clear view of you know this should look like this and that do you, you have a, mm -hmm. like a dis discussion about that uh, and and sometimes you you might just leave it to someone who knows more about it than yourself because you want okay. it to be. I mean, and in this case, what was sort of gave me a lot of freedom is that I'm Swedish and Ari isn't. So when it comes to folklore, and that, that's why the Swedish team or the part of the team that was you know Swedish. Uh, I think it's like six, seven people that we sort of carried the 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 responsibility of making something that that was sort of believable in that mm -hmm. sense. Uh, mm -hmm. But as you go along, I mean, I, I worked closely with Henrik Svensson, the set designer, and we discussed, you know, what what is important here, what what do we have to to solve in a way. Right. Uh, and then we decided, you know, uh, who will do what and, and do we need more people? And, and uh, the third sort of wheel on, on that experience is Ragnar Persson, who did like, right. the drawings and the, the like, he, he really uses pens and pencils, by the Be way. Beautiful <laughs> work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Fantastic, fantastic uh, guy in mm -hmm. every aspect. Uh, but but then we we... I mean, for, from the beginning, the the thing we had to, you know, get to first was making this sort of make believe version of the Helsinki, where is the part of Sweden where where the film is sort of right. uh, played out, uh, mm -hmm. to to take that the kind of sort of folklore painting and 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 uh, arts and crafts uh, and make it into some kind of version of that for the Horga community. Uh, so that was, you know, taking parts that, that you know, we had could reference from, from existing paintings and existing uh, old uh, uh, decorations uh, and try, then sort of uh, uh, fuse it with the, the Horga culture. Uh, okay. So, so that was the main part. And then, then the rest of it, a lot of my my time was spent sort of looking over what other artists or or, or like carpenters and stuff were doing and come mm -hmm. you know come up with new ideas and try to feed examples uh, to, to to solve different sort of problems with a could be a, I mean we I did at one point I, I baked pastries in my oven <laughs> in my summer. <laughs> Just to see how we nice. could sort of make something that would go visually, and then we did like a special uh, rolling pin. Okay. That was supposed to to when you roll it, it it makes a kind of a magical like a rune pattern on the dough. Right. Okay. Uh, that was so that, that was custom, to give that was the custom built. Yeah, we we did so oh, much. Wow. I mean, uh, and that's Shit. another thing with the film. You make so much. We just poured stuff into the movie that a lot of it i think the rolling pin is in the end i think you can when they when they when they take when they uh what would you say they got out the bear like yeah. in the end of the movie spoiler alert uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then i think you can see the rolling pin on like on the bench behind the actors so yeah, the scene okay. where the rolling pin was used, it never ended up never being used in the movie. So, oh. um, and we also spent a lot of time making the the musical instruments for the band. And in the end, I think you can you only see them like from behind and like from one of the crane shots. Yeah. But but yeah. all the musical instruments are sort of made with with like a Swedish. Uh, 
like a deranged uh, mutation of, of a Swedish folk instrument no. in mind. So, but wow. that sort of, but that, that was also something that I learned that, that uh, in order to make things believe or make you know like the whole thing believable, you have to actually invent like a story. Like everything has to sort of make sense in a way. Right. So when when we we built up like the horgas, both with the how the horgas work, and that you know it has a kind of backstory that's right. very elaborate, uh, which sort of guided us in 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 making the things that they make for themselves, if you know what I mean. And, sure. And right. That's also something that I, I think is uh, I learned that you have to sort of overkill. Uh, because the audience will never sort of think about it, but they will sort of perceive it as how yeah. it's something that is, you just see it as being coherent, but you don't really sort of analyze it. Uh, right, right. Uh, but we, we did you know, so much stuff that's in there that, that, that is not really, it doesn't drive the story. It yeah, just sort okay. of, but it makes sense. Additional because details. It, yeah, exactly. But it, it, okay. it has this sort of, it makes sense in, in because it, it's sort of uh, thought through and, and has some kind of uh, relevance to the Horga society. Okay, you know? okay. Now, you, you mentioned making the pastries. That wasn't your body hair in that one, was it? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I was doing some sketches. <laughs> no, that, that was I, I left that out. Oh, uh, gross! But it, it's, Beautiful, it's thank actually, you. <laughs> it's one of those pastries. Uh, that yeah. Was, oh, uh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So, if I can ask, what was you know in all of the things? I mean, it sounds like even further into detail from what I could even imagine. I I could tell you how many times I've seen the movie, but uh, I've I've spent a lot of time watching watching this particular movie. Uh, what are some of the uh, what are some of the pieces that that were built for this uh, that didn't even end up getting made made for the cut that were uh, you know or maybe even a favorite of yours that didn't get made you know kind of like the rolling pin yeah I think I mean the the book the Ruben Rader you know uh, yeah. it's actually I mean it is in the movie but the whole yeah. uh, the whole idea of how that book is created and how they decipher uh, the, the the scribblings of, of Ruben or whatever you say, uh -huh. uh, that is also something that that never sort of it was a bigger part in in the in the manuscript. It's like uh, there's a bigger what is it? The, 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 it just takes a lot of more space and more to the and, story yeah and ruben is more i mean okay. in the end he, he isn't uh, apparent in the film a lot uh, right. So, right so that's something that sort of and and i made that book uh uh i designed a kind of back because i thought it would be cool if it was made in, uh, in the beginning the script is made of leather it's a uh, and i thought that was it would be more folk if it was made out of wood, because that's something that's sort of more uh, uh, natural. You, you, know, you don't have a lot of oxes, but you have a shitload of trees. <laughs> <laughs> so I did uh, uh, thinking about when I was a child and, and you went to people's houses in, in, in the mountains. A uh -huh. lot of people have had guest books with like a wooden uh more like not so much a, a bound book but it's, it's more like uh uh pieces of wood that are sort of uh fold and like a, can, like a you, cover yeah and and there's like a clever little wooden mechanisms that makes it sort of you can open it and, wow. and, and for okay. the for the and i went to uh, like a museum in stockholm where, where there are carpenters uh, and I asked them, you know, how how would you go about to do this? And we discussed, you know, and then, then I did some drawings for a book that has a expandable, uh, 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 what do you say, like a back, 
the back oh, of the book. Okay. So, so okay. I mean, you can see that in the movie, but it's, you know, you, you really have to know what you're looking for. So <laughs> okay. the thing is that it's kind of modular, that like you start out and the, and the, the pages are sort of added on top of each other. Okay. And when, when you reach a certain point, you can add another like a back module still made in wood and there's a little mechanism you can add it and everything is sort of designed by me and a uh, 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 very clever carpenter on, on location <laughs> did wow. everything for that and then it's supposed to be like like when you reach a certain width when it becomes hard to handle they put it up in the bookshelf in the temple you know uh, and everything about that you know how he has a special desk where he works when he does that. And, and we had a lot of ideas of, of how that is made, that it also sort of makes sense. There's a kind of a, almost like an Oya board where you can sort of find different meanings in his scribbles. But sure. none of that is really, it doesn't drive the story. So, so you know, it, it didn't really end up in the, in the film, but it's still, you know, it adds to the kind of detail. Uh, sure, sure. Okay. So, um, uh, what, and, uh, what, what? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. That, that's it. I, I really like that book. And I, I, it got sort of lost. I was hoping that I, I could have it after the film, but, you know, everything oh, was... Oh, no. <laughs> so I have, oh, to make, really? I have to make another one, I guess. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, uh, so oh that's no. So I... I no, no, but that's sort of, uh, everything is sort of destroyed. And everything in film is made, that's also, it's just an illusion. I mean, the, the houses you, you make, you can't live in, in. It's just sort of cardboard and, and splinters, you know. It, it's, that's right. sort of part right. of the fascina fascination as well, you know. Right, okay. Yeah. What went into the, uh, the, the production as far as, you know the 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 overlay for when they, the the characters are introduced to to the the village or you know the 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 sacrificial temple at the end were were those pretty close to the earlier blueprints of how they were drawn up and were were visualized at first yeah i think yeah i mean henrik the set designer he he had been working on this project for, for you know like maybe two years mm -hmm. uh i mean before the film got the, right. the final funding and everything so he had this <clears throat> enormous kind of uh look book <laughs> for oh, like wow. every single scene in the in the script and uh, -huh. uh, uh you know with, with uh, s some some more detail than other but but uh i think that he had a uh quite clear idea of everything uh you know w when the production actually started or the pre-production actually started sure uh but one, one of the things that that he knew that he wanted is like in the big house the the wall the murals of the big house uh and, and i think that's why he sort of contacted me and ragnar because he Ari and, and and Henrik they thought that this really has to sort of be on point, you know. Okay. Uh, okay. Because it's 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 it sort of reflects this sort of heritage, uh, you know, folk Swedish folk style or you know whatever. Sure. So I think that sort of doing the big house uh, was maybe that sort of what sort of brought us onto the project more or less, you know, uh, and then we ended up, you know, then I ended up being like a supervising art director for a lot of other th stuff as well. But, uh, okay. uh, and, uh, I hope, I mean, in the script, the, the murals have a slightly different role, but, uh, I think it ended up better because what, what happened is that, that, uh, there is one one point in the script where the the mural is a bit sort of uh, foreseeing, uh, if you know what I mean. Sure. Uh, yeah. But but then in the end, 
in the script it says that the murals is supposed to depict, you know, different like the history of the Horgas. And then we had some problems coming up. We we're, were so pressed of time, you know, that that like the you know you've seen the film, it's like huge yeah. <laughs> area yeah. to, to, to cover and, and you we, we had so much stuff to do and we like on, for two people it's was a pretty impressed. <laughs> yeah, a lot of work. Uh, but then I, I sort of came up with the idea that, that, you know, we were sort of more or less left. We had some, some background stories, but we were also sort of, we didn't really know, so, oh, you know, what has happened? What, what history do they have? And it was so hard to, to make something that was both sort of detailed and, and Ragnar was sort of wondering, you know, what, what, what should I draw? You know, what, what, what are the scenes? Mm-hmm. But then I then I realized that that if if they if this is a ritual you know if they have this kind of reoccurring sort of stuff mm-hmm. yeah then everything that happens in the script everything that happens in this film on this occasion is something that has happened before previously yeah yeah, yeah. so then I started reading the script from the beginning and just highlighted stuff that Ragnar can use to make the imagery. And once we started doing that, we realized that, that this would actually make the murals kind of uh, forcing the whole movie, <laughs> which is something people picked up. I and that, that, you know, it, that felt like a very nice uh, uh, addition. I mean, the, people have, you know, picked up on that a lot, you know, after yeah, the movie. Yeah, absolutely. But, but, uh, and, I, and I also, at one point, I had some idea that, that we, we should be able to do even more, you know, draw on that even more. Uh, and I was thinking about the film called The, the Draftsman's Contract, if you've seen that or no. I, no, I have uh, it's, a, it's, it's a bit like, uh, I mean, there's a lot of films like, like Blow Up or uh, Eyes of Laura Mars, the Carpenter movie, oh, okay. where, where, yeah, where yeah, yeah. somebody's sort of making images that, that, becomes reality or whatever and sure. and i was thinking that that uh but that's something that that it was never pursued more than that uh because we didn't have real t- because that would have meant sort of starting the production all over again and i don't i don't think r was very it's it wasn't that kind of story anyway you know but sure uh, but it it solved the problem for us to 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 sort of get content for the images for the walls uh, yeah okay so okay. so awesome. that's how, how that came about uh, okay beautiful yeah. um so, ah. aha all right okay. beautiful all right so we were uh we were on the topic talking about you know some of the artwork uh some of ragnar's work and i wanted to ask you out of all of the beautiful amazing murals that he did do you have some of some some favorites of his that uh, that turned out from all the all the all the works that he Ooh. produced uh, yeah, I can't, I, I can't show it, but I don't have it available now, but I think there's a, it's a very nice penis <laughs> on one of the guys <laughs> that it goes like, almost like an elephant trunk, like this. <laughs> uh, that I was, and we redid that because we, we, <laughs> we, uh, we had some, I mean, we didn't have problems because he's, he's so talented, but, but we wanted to nail a lot of the 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 stuff you see, and it, even you don't have to go to Sweden. You can watch, you know, Italian medieval paintings, whatever. Sure. There is a kind of weirdness. Uh, <laughs> they they are trying to depict, you know, whatever they're doing, but but sometimes they make sort of weird creative choices. <laughs> with sort of, and it's it's hard to know whether they 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 if it's sort of lack of skill or if it's some kind of uh, uh, artistic kind of, you know, that, that's the kind of window you work. Sure. If you know what I mean. I mean, wh- yeah. why, did, why didn't people start drawing in perspective from the, right from the start? It's because you have some kind of uh, uh, purpose with what you're doing. And, mm-hmm. and so you have to sort of, you do art, in the most sort of economical, smartest way to get the job done. 
Sure. And, and, and when aesthetic sort of demands evolve, then you make it more elaborate, you know, mm -hmm. because otherwise people... Will... But there is a kind of economy all the time, you know. Drawing instead of painting is also about economy, that you have this kind of outline that it's, it's not existing in the real world. Um, Right. So, so what Ragnar and I discussed is we, we went to places where real, you know, the Helsinki paintings, like the best examples that are sort of still <clears throat> around today. Mm -hmm. And we tried to sort of understand how did they sort of boil down stuff when they depicted depicts it and what, what is sort of valid or not. Uh, and I think the, the shape of that is, is something that is it's very sort of a genuine kind of weird way uh, <laughs> that, that looks very authentic. So I think that's okay. my, my still my favorite. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you know, because that, that, that was something that was very, very hard to nail. And I think he made a fantastic job. But like, even if you mimic it, it's very easy to, to, to you, you have the feeling that it's sort of it's contemporary anyway. This is like sure. a, it, it's very hard. Some things that you're not aware of uh, uh, what makes it authentic. So we have to we have to do a lot of sort of analyzing. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it, and I have to mention too because just recently, <clears throat> excuse me, just recently, A twenty four released a special director's cut of of Midsummer. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that or not, but. Um, I don't know. What, what, yeah, I, I I don't think I've seen that version, but yeah. Oh, it is beautiful. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I just got it uh, probably a week ago or so. Uh, but just absolutely. I mean, it is a work of art just from mm. every detail to it. Uh, but the funny thing, the, well, I shouldn't say the funny thing. The cool thing is, is it comes with an art book and it, you know, has a lot of the murals that are in it. But, oh, well, yeah. But, but, but further in it are some of the pictures that Ragnar's, that Ragnar did. And it's almost like, like, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what the, the term is, uh, like sex positions and like just a bunch of penises and different things going on. I'm like, yeah. what the hell's going on? Yeah. <laughs> what is this? You know? And then, so it's funny you mentioned that because I started, you know, in the research, you know, for just the interview in general, I started looking up traditional artwork and traditional mm -hmm. Swedish artwork mm -hmm. and different things. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, that's actually pretty prevalent. Yeah. <laughs> that's something that you can, that you can see. So yeah. Uh, there, there's but that's, absolutely... that's, that's, that's one thing that we, we had to sort of rethink because it's, it, I mean, the Horger culture in the film, it's sort of contrafactual. It doesn't exist. Because, yeah. like, the, the traditional Helsinki murals and Helsinki paintings, they are Christian. And, and the cool thing about them, oh, that wow. they, are, they are depicting, you know, scenes from the Bible. Uh, uh, oh, wow. Mostly. But people in Helsinki didn't know anything about, you know, how things looked in the Holy Land. Right. So when they when they are are painting or drawing like uh, the city of Jerusalem, it's like local build, like how buildings looked in Sweden, and sure. everybody like the three wise men are dressed up like wealthy farmers in Sweden at that time. Oh, okay. so it's it's wow. only when you sort of when you look at it from afar, it it doesn't sort of strike you as being biblical. Okay. Uh, so they they sort of fused the folklore and the burning bush is like a local you know, growing bush and whatever. Yeah. Uh, and they have this way of sort of uh, uh, making like a, a local sort of flavored version of uh, of Christianity. Uh, I guess pretty much like like in Mexico they they have a, a, a Catholic belief. But yeah. they also have this kind of folk when they make art and crafts mm -hmm. uh, like the around the their yeah, exactly they, they they it sort of leaks into the uh, the main religion or main religious beliefs and and sure but the the horgas are they are not Christians they are sort of they are still in, in a pagan society that maybe yeah. reflects something that that you know Swedish people or people living in what is now Sweden had mm -hmm. before Christianity arrived. So we had to think about what would they sort of, they would never depict 
stuff from the Bible because it's not part of the culture. And then, okay. and then we we thought well, you know, paganism is you know it's a, a lot about the uh, passing of the seasons and the fertility and stuff like that. And sure. they are totally sort of uh, unashamed of of the role of of sex in in the uh, sort of the, the prolonging of society and everything so sure so then right. then is when we talked about it and i said you, you have to do a lot of more sex <laughs> throw <laughs> more sex in there uh, so, to make it sort of non prude or non christian looking or whatever yeah. okay so, okay yeah. yeah i was i was I very mean, those, i was very those... taken aback by those pages <laughs> yeah and i think also i mean talking about i think those images are also examples of where Ragnar did uh, and I, I found because for him I found a lot of uh, sort of profane medieval Italian uh, uh, murals where where people are sort of you know doing it and everything and, sure. and they also sure. have these kind of sort of blank faces at the, <laughs> is there something that that Art at that time, they don't reveal a lot of. I mean, emotion. The, the, the artistic expression hasn't sort of moved into to playing out in in people's faces. Right. You know, always you know the the Christ and the the Virgin Mary. Never, ever, nobody sort of seems to be aware of what's going on. It's not sort of reflected in the. And that's something that if you do that, it looks more modern. You know, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that we also have to we have to sort of wash everything. You can't have a sort of frowning faces or you know, happy faces, whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so, but once we sort of established that, uh, the, the, he could do this sort of weird. <laughs> the, Hell yeah. Things started looking more weird from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, you know, with that, I, I have to ask. Uh, your take on this, because I've actually, I've talked to Ragnar a couple of times, just as far as mm -hmm. his artwork, uh, you know, and his approach to different things and, and a couple of other people that have been, you know, in, in, involved in Midsummer. And I, I have to run this by you. So recently I was talking with somebody about the movie Jaws. You've seen, you've seen Jaws mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. um, so a, a lot of times, one of the things I hear with, with that movie is that the music is just as much a character as what the actual visual characters are mm. in the movie. Mm. Uh, you know, so, and then thinking about Midsummer, I kind of feel like that encaptivates the same feeling with the artwork in the movie, that the artwork and the visuals are just as much a character as the, you know, humanized characters mm -hmm. in the movie. What, what, what is your take on that? You know, because I, I have some people that it kind of feels like more of just a, a humble feeling and, oh, I don't, I don't think so. But really, I mean, it very much is, you know, on top of, you know, some of the people that walk away from that movie as opposed to thinking of, oh, what was that guy's name, the, the, the character that was in that? Or, you mm. know, they walk mm. away and they say, oh, my God, did you see, you know, like the trees were moving, the flowers mm. were, you know, were, yeah. were molding to her body. Yeah. What, you know, what, what's your take on mm. that? Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't, I haven't really thought about it like that, but I, I think what, what, it, it, it might be, I mean, it, it is a character in a way that you're using the word, uh, but I think maybe, maybe what, what you're struggling with or, or sort of what, what, what you, when you watch the movie and you see that because the murals and the like the it it sort of it gives you an idea that this is something that that goes far back it's like sure. like uh, time is sort of, sort of i mean the past time past ages even are sort of looking down upon what's happening exactly right now and it's, it's it ha there's like an audience whatever is playing out is sort of uh predestined in a way and I think that the, that character, I guess, that that we are sort of feeling is present is a kind of idea about fate or, or you know, like you are wondering, is everything that's playing out before us, is it predestined? Is there a way out of this? You know, and there's, a, I mean, a lot of films have that even as a, the main theme, you know, 
Like, yeah. like almost every science fiction movie about time travel has this kind of, you know, <laughs> is it possible to avoid your your predestined fate? And and maybe that's right. something you pick up that there is something older going on. There's something. There is a machinery around these Americans in the sort of. Uh, 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 the newcomers, the, the, the intruders. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, some, yeah. it's a machinery that's sort of closing in on them. And it's, it's omnipotent. It's sort of everywhere. It's in the drawings. It's in the, the trees. It's in the ground. It's in the, the mushrooms, in the drugs. And it's yeah. sort of everything is sort of moving towards the end. And they are as well, but they're not, they are the only ones <laughs> that are not aware of it, <laughs> fully, fully aware of it. Right, right, uh, right. So in that way, I think you're right. There's, a, you know, the, the, everything that's, it's a character or maybe like a, it's a driving force, you know, yeah, in, absolutely. in the film. Absolutely. And, and it makes it scary because it it's, has this sort of feeling that it's something unavoidable. It's, you know, you're walking or, or traveling towards this end, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 and from even even from the beginning, you know, it's almost like you're being introduced to the very first character. I've told some people this before going into the movie. I say, you know, right when it starts, there's going mm. to be the very first visual is going to be the first character that you're going to be introduced yeah. to, and from there, you know, it's going to keep on, you know, introducing yeah, you to yeah, the yeah. cast. But yeah. truly, you know, I mean, it opens up with a mural that pretty much mm. spells out how the whole mm. film is going to roll out. Yeah, so. I think Definitely. the only mystery, I, I have to start rolling, I have to get my kids from school, but I, th I think sure. the, the, the only thing that sort of mystifies me, that I haven't sort of made up my mind about in the film, and I mean, Ari is not, you know, helping anyone, <laughs> solving, <laughs> solving his riddles, uh, <laughs> is whether the, the, the I mean, the, the, the things that happens to Florence, or... or uh, the, the parents who over the the you know not suicide but ki killing uh, in yeah. the beginning uh, with her uh, sister and, and, and parents if that is at all linked to whatever happens I, I mean it is psychologically of course and and dramatically but the question is is that part of this machinery or not Dri driving you know? her to wanna to want to take part yeah is, is that somehow sort of part of the machinery that we talked about or is it some kind of prerequisite <laughs> that yes. makes her a possible sort of protagonist or whatever or yeah. a queen you know uh but you know the, yeah the jury will be out on that <laughs> one for a long time i think but, but that's that's sure. the only thing that that isn't really I could see it really both ways. And I, th I yeah. think that's sort of, of course. Well, I'm just, glad. Maybe, maybe it's sort of part of the whole structure of the story that, that you know, what, what makes you into, what sets you onto this path that is life or destiny, you know, is it right. something that happened or is everything sort of, is there a pathway or a crossroad somewhere where you can right. make different choices? Uh, right, right. I don't yeah, know. you know, I mean, there's definitely certain questions. And, you know, I, I guess another thing is, you know, as, as Pele, when he's talking about how he lost his parents in a fire. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, there's, mm. there's that whole conversation, you know, it's mm. like, well, did his parents sacrifice himself and he's been in this yeah. community forever? Yeah. Or did yeah. they get burned up as, you know, just a way to bring him in? There's tons of questions. Mm. I, there, there's, we could go on and on all day. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to leave the audience with that, and I'm going to let you. Uh, I'm going to let you go, man. I truly yeah. appreciate all your time. I don't want to keep you any longer. You got to get going to your day to day. Yeah. So I uh, thank you so so much for taking the time. A, this means the world to pleasure. me, man. It was a pleasure. Take all care. All right. Well, See thank you. you very much. You take care. Bye bye now. <laughs> he's a lo-fi horror guy Yeah, he's kind of a guy, but he is so lo-fi Lo-fi horror guy Yeah,